Hello and welcome back. I am basically Hawkins and today we're going to talk about the purple Beast Pirate starter deck. Now that we've gotten the full reveal for the entire deck, all of the cards, all the combos, my thoughts, and let's break it down. But first I want to give a quick shout out to the One Piece TCG Discord. The folks there are working real hard to make great proxies in English for the simulator and all that and find the best resolution images they can. Uh, and it's really helpful when it comes to making these videos and getting the tabletop simulator mod all up and running in the best case it can be. So uh, thanks again to all the folks over there for working so hard on that stuff. But now let's go ahead and get right into the deck. First off, obviously, we have the leader of the Animal Kingdom Pirates, the Beast Pirates, the Yonko himself, Kaido, a 5,000 power striker style purple card with five life. So you're starting your, your game with five life because of him. And his effect is activate main. Dawn minus seven once per turn. Trash up to one of your opponent's life. So you would have to take seven dawn from your field, put them back into your dawn deck, and then you just straight up get rid of one of your opponent's life cards. Obviously that effect is very powerful, very useful, but obviously it's also something that's going to happen maybe once or twice during a game. Seven Dawn is a huge cost to pay to do something like that. You're giving up your ability to do a lot of stuff in future turns. Uh, seven, you're literally taking seven Dawn from your field, even if you've used them for other things, and putting them back into your Dawn deck. That's, you know, that's a big cost, but it is a big benefit too, especially if you're right there at the end of the game and you've got like one attack left that you can possibly make uh, and your opponent has one life and then you still have to hit them after that. Getting rid of that one life is going to do a huge benefit. Also worth mentioning is that it's trashing the life, which means it doesn't go to your opponent's hand or potentially trigger anything, which depending on how powerful the trigger effects become, as we get more cards, that trashing ability is going to be super useful, especially against decks that are particularly made to have triggers. Uh, so overall, this is a pretty interesting leader card. I don't think it has nearly the uh, reoccurring utility of the Luffy leader card, which is something that you could use like every single turn. But when this effect does kick in, it's going to mean something. So the next card we have in the deck is Ulti, a member of the Animal Kingdom Pirates uh, crew. She is a 5,000 power, four cost, striker style card. Uh, and her effect is on play, Dawn minus one. So you put a Dawn back into your Dawn deck. Play up to one cost four or lower page one from your hand. She also has a counter plus 2,000 effect. So she's obviously a very nice counter, but that effect is very interesting. Um, obviously in the series, her and page one are very close, they're brother and sister, and her effect is play a page one that costs four or lower. And I think that's very interesting to note, that it specifies a cost, because I speculate that there will be uh, future cards that, you know, especially for zone types, that are going to be sort of higher cost versions of cards. Like say page one, the page one that's in this specific deck is just a base page one, it's just in its normal human form, or whatever race they are, I think they're human. Um, but I think eventually there's going to be zone transformation cards that are going to be like page one in his, his spinal form, and it's going to be naturally a much higher cost card, like a six cost or a seven cost, but it'll have an effect like if you have a page one on the field, you can play this for free or reduced cost. So Ulti's ability would allow you to play the base level page ones, but not play the transformed, more powerful versions of page one. Uh, so overall, that this, this effect is very specific, very niche. Uh, I think we know we're getting at least one extra page one from the booster set because we've seen an art for it. It's potential that it could be an alt art of the starter deck page one, but I think it's probably gonna be just another page one, and that will be uh, probably allowed to use off of this effect too. So we'll see how useful this effect is as we get more page ones. But overall, pretty interesting card, you know, four cost, 5,000 power. That's a bit more expensive of a cost for a power that high, but uh, you know, the counter is good, uh, good card. The next card that we have is the Kaido character card, the Kaido that you would play from the starter deck instead of it being the leader. And this card is a nine cost, 10,000 power striker style card with the effect on play, Dawn minus five, so you put five Dawn back into your Dawn deck. You can KO one of your opponent's 
costs seven or lower characters. Then this character gains rush during the turn. This card is crazy strong. Um, you, you only get two of these in the starter deck. One thing that you're gonna be able to note is that the structure and the makeup of the cards in, in the purple starter deck are very different. The ratios are very different than the red starter deck where there's a lot more four sets of cards. There's a lot more two sets of cards in this and then like four sets of like event cards and stuff like that. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but this card is nuts. I mean, that is a, I mean, obviously this is a card that would have to be played way late into the game if we're talking about a nine cost just to put them on the field to begin with. And then you also put five back into your deck. That's, you know, that's a, a big cost to pay. So a lot, it's becoming very clear that purple is a lot of end game. You know, you've got your, your, uh, Dawn already laid out, and now it's time to do some heavy hitting kind of stuff. Uh, and not to mention his effect, which is that you KO one of your opponent's seven cost or lower characters, which is, I'm pretty sure, every card in the, the Straw Hat starter deck that applies to. He can he can on play take out anything from the, the Straw Hat starter deck. And then he also has Rush on top of that, so he gets to knock one of your opponent's cards away and then swing huge card, huge upside, but also huge cost, uh, and very powerful with that 10,000 power strike. Once he swings, it's going to be really hard to kill him uh, with your opponent's cards next turn anyway, not to mention that you're getting rid of one of your opponent's potential attackers anyway, so he is, uh, he comes out to play and he's, he comes out to stay. The next card that we have is King, a six cost, 7,000 power special style card and his ability is on play, Dawn minus one, KO up to one cost four or lower enemy character. So obviously we're seeing a reoccurring theme already that is return Dawn to your Dawn deck and then kill something on your opponent's side of the field. These effects are very brutal and very aggressive. Um, these cards obviously all have higher costs than once again, pretty much everything in the Straw Hat starter deck. There's a lot more low costs early game stuff that the Straw Hat starter deck can play compared to this where you really need to set out a lot of Dawn before you can even do anything. And then you end up putting that Dawn back in your deck anyway. Um, so obviously there's gonna be cards that allow us to bring Dawn out a lot more, you know, uh, unnaturally. If the natural way to get Dawn is at the beginning of your turn, you get two. Uh, purple is also gonna have abilities that allow us to get Dawn on the field, which is clearly gonna be very necessary considering the high costs that these cards have. But this card, once again, very good. It's like almost like a, a mini Kaido. He's got a slightly smaller cost, slightly less power, slight less Dawn effect cost, and kills a slightly weaker card. He's just, you know, he's Kaido Jr. So there's two copies of him too. Is really good. <laughs> yeah, what can you say? It's a, it's a really powerful card. The next card that we have, obviously after King, comes Queen. The five cost, 6,000 power striker style card. Queen is a blocker. And he has the effect on play, Don minus one, draw two cards, then discard one from your hand. And he has counter a thousand. So Queen is going to be very useful and he's got a lot of functionality. Uh, I especially think that blocker is gonna be useful uh, to allow you to stall your game a bit so that you can get more Dawn on the field to play those bigger, more expensive cards. And that draw power from the Dawn effect on play, the on play effect, uh, I mean, unlike Digimon where drawing happens multiple times every turn, there's no real built-in way to draw during your turn in this game. So having draw effects like this draw two, trash one effect are gonna prove to be vital in these games, especially if, you're, if you don't have a great hand or, you know, especially in this purple deck where there's so many high cost cards and you're searching for something that's a little lower cost, Queen is going to save you. That counter is nice too, but it's that blocker and that draw power that makes Queen so good. And you only get two copies of Queen as well. So this is a deck that once you are able to start refurbishing the decks and, and, and buy multiples, you're probably going to want to throw four of him into any purple deck because that blocker really can't be beat right now. The next card we have is Sasaki, the Triceratops boy. Uh, he is a three cost, 4,000 power shooter style card. And his effect is on play, Dawn minus one, you can draw one card. So once again, you get some draw power with him, which is gonna be super nice and useful to have. He's a bit of a cheaper card for the for the purple deck. 
Uh, so his his effects are probably something you're going to want to use a lot of early game, especially to build up your hand, bring up your options, and then you know he can charge in with his 4,000 power. I really am curious to see what they do with zone effects because we have this whole deck with all these zone users, these zone devil fruit users, and none of them actively transform or, or are in their transform phase in this deck. So I'm really wondering if in booster set one or at some point we're going to get cards that are their transform form. And if it's just going to be like Sasaki or if it's going to say a Sasaki, you know, hybrid form, full animal form, whatever the effects are, Triceratops mode, um, and how that's going to interact with the actual cards. Because, you know, Sasuke's no scrub, but 4,000 power seems a little low for him. He's also got the counter plus 1,000. Counters are obviously very useful to have. Um, but he's probably going to be something you really want to have in your hand to be able to play while you're building up your Dawn so that he can, you know, so that you have those big cards again. And he gets that draw. He's only at three costs. He's a good card. I, and you also have four copies of him in your deck, which you're going to want to have those four copies. The next card that we have is everybody's favorite member of the Animal Kingdom Pirates, Sheep's Head, uh, a two cost, 4,000 power slasher style card with a counter thousand he's your basic he's basically just the vv of this deck i think he's literally exactly vv um you're, you're gonna want to have a bunch of him though because he's cheap to play so you actually can you know do some stuff early game build up some some field while you're waiting for your your dawn for your big boys so he's a good one to have around he's got his counter he's cheap uh <laughs> You know, kind of a random guy to have. He's basically a, a, a named grunt. There's so many Animal Kingdom pirates, beast pirates. I don't know what I, I call them. Uh, <laughs> there's so many named crew members. It's funny that they went with him as opposed to, you know, Batman or, or, or uh, Speed, I think is her name, or the Lion Guy. There's so many There's so many characters that I think they would have picked before Sheep's Head, who's like in, what, one chapter, two chapters of the whole thing? Uh, but yeah, so Sheep's Head. Exciting, right? Next, we've had King, we've had Queen. Now it's time for Jack. Jack is a three cost, 4,000 power striker style, and his effect is on play. You may discard one card from your hand, reveal one Dawn from your Dawn deck in active, which is, <laughs> that is a great effect, considering that there are cards in this deck that allow you to draw, meaning that you can potentially have cards you don't need in your hand so that discard is not that bad of a cost to pay and you get to add a dawn to your field which is super useful considering that's the name of the game with with purple you want that dawn in the field so jack is great he is a great card for this deck he is he is going to set you up for future things so his his three cost potentially is basically a two cost because you get another dawn when you play him so he's basically a two cost 4,000 power with, you know, a dawn setting ability. So he's he's like a better version of Sheep's Head. Who would have thought that he'd be better than Sheep's Head? Um, but he is, yeah. That is a good card. The counter, once again, always good to have that counter. But Jack, I think he is going to be crucial for games. Uh, and he, there's only two copies of him in the actual original starter deck. So yeah, get your Jacks. Next card we have is basically the Karoo of the purple starter deck and i can't think of a more notable beast pirate character than gin rummy uh you know thank goodness they included her uh otherwise you know sheep's head would look like a, a scrub so we've got gin rummy in here as the the crew basically the one cost she is your early 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 game card to uh if you really want to play something and get some some bodies on the field she is the one to do it she's got that counter as well uh so that's probably going to be her big use in late game is just as as that extra little counter you know karu's good so why shouldn't she be good and the next card we have is who's who a three cost three thousand power slasher style card and his effect is on play dawn minus one ko one of your opponent's three cost or lower characters so he is like a super super small version of kaido or king he's your you know he's cheap he's a cheap little way to get rid of something that's bugging you and he has the trigger effect that you can play him so if he's hit in your life cards when your opponent attacks you you can throw him down on the field 
and then that on play effect kicks in anyway. So if you have the if you want it to set to spend that extra dawn, you can KO one of your opponents to recost or lower characters, which makes him frankly an amazing card because the upside of him being in your your life cards is super high. He's he's useful from your hand obviously, but getting to play him for free and then just throwing away one dawn to to KO one of your opponents to recost, that's great. That is a great ability. Uh, and there's two copies of him in the purple deck, so uh, yeah, all the best cards in this deck you get two copies of. The next card we have is the Black Maria card, a two cost, 2,000 power special style card, and she is a blocker. So she is going to be uh, probably the main card that you want to see in your hand early game. She also has that counter 1,000, but that blocker is going to be super, super useful to just hold off your opponent while you build up that dawn, get a queen out there so you've got a bit more of a powerful blocker. But those Black Marias are going to be the bread and butter of your early game as you prep for your big boys getting to the field and being able to swing. So uh, she is, in the grand scheme of this purple starter deck, great to see, and, and that's definitely a card you're going to want in your opening hand. And there are four copies of her, so you don't have to worry about searching that hard. The next card that we have is Page One, a four cost, 6,000 power striker style card. And that's it, he's a vanilla. He's got the counter 1,000, but he is a four cost, 6,000 power. So he is the Frankie of this deck uh, compared to the Straw Hat deck. But the one thing that makes him a little bit better than Frankie is that Ulti will play him for free, uh, which is what makes him go from a good card to a great card because if you've got him in your hand and you've got ulti in your hand, then you've got them both on the field. Uh, and that is great to have. And as I said earlier, I fully expect there to be cards that just straight up say, if you have a page one untransformed on your field or something like that, or if you have a card with page one in the name on your field, uh, you can play this card for free or something like that. And it's, it's transformed form that would cost much more if you just played it straight to the field. Um, that would give it more power and more all of those things. So yeah, I think that page one, all these zones, they're going to have a lot of upside as we get more cards. And then we have X Drake, a, one of the supernovas, but also a member of the Marines, but also a member of the Animal Kingdom Pirates. And he is the Robin of this deck, the three cost 5,000 power card. He is a slasher style. He's got counter plus 1,000. Um, he, you know, he is a member of Kaido's crew technically. Uh, so if he's there, why isn't Hawkins in this deck? Hmm? Got room for Sheep's Head, but not Hawkins? Anyway, he's a good card. He's fine. You know, he's he's that middle of the road, slightly powerful, slightly cheap card that'll, you know, allow you to attack your opponent's leaders without much effort. And there are four copies of him. He's definitely, you know, he's there. He's, he, he's a vanilla, but he's there. He's good. And now moving on to the event cards of the deck, we have All-Star Disaster which is a four cost event card that has the effect main draw one, then reveal one dawn from your dawn deck and active. And that effect is nuts. That is a crazy good effect because drawing is hard to do in this game and getting extra dawn is hard to do in this game. And one card that allows you to do both is crazy. Oh yeah, and it has the trigger effect, activate this card's main effect. So if that card happens to be hit in your life, you get to do it for free, which is, Crazy good. That is crazy. Uh, so he's it, it, this card is basically a three cost because you get to add a dawn to the field. Um, draw dawn. Crazy good card. Uh, probably a deck making good card. It's so good. Uh, the event cards haven't been particularly exciting to me. The 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 gum gum pistol card is pretty good, uh, but this card is is scary. Um, and it seems like such a simple effect, but it is. It is dangerous because it's, it doesn't take a lot of effort and it, it could potentially change a whole game for you. And there are two copies of that. Another card we have two copies of is the Brachio Bomber. This is one of Queen's big attacks when he's uh, attacking Big Mom in the manga. And this is a six cost event card that has the effect main KO up to one of your opponent's six cost or lower characters, then reveal a Dawn from your Dawn deck inactive. What? <laughs> this card is also so good. All these cards that allow you to add a Dawn to your field automatically make the cost of the card one Dawn lower, essentially. So this is basically a five cost that lets you get rid of one of your opponent's six cost or lower characters, which once again is 
everything in the red starter deck. Um, there, I don't think there's a, there's a card that costs more than six in the whole thing. So this card is really good. So red clearly needs to step up, up and get some more expensive cards because purple is going to be able to knock everything off your field at the moment. Um, and it also has the trigger effect, reveal one dawn from your dawn deck inactive. So that's a really good trigger as well. If this happens to be hit in your life, grab a dawn. Or don't and uh, add it to your hand and then the next time and then your next turn, kill one of your opponent's cards and add a dawn. Uh, such a good card. Such a good card. It reminds me of Hammer Spark in uh, Digimon, just a card that it's like, oh in your hand it's great. In your in your security it's great. I win. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a great card. You get two copies of it. And the next card that we get is Blast Breath, a one-cost event card that is a counter. And it is counter is Dawn minus one. Give 4,000 power to, to one of your leader characters during this battle. So this is basically a slightly more costly version of Guard Point in the Red Starter deck with a slightly higher power boost. It doesn't have the trigger effect. So this is a card that you would only want to play from your hand and it is a one cost, but you do have to also subtract a Dawn from your field, but it does buff something by 4,000 power, which is a very, very big buff. It's the biggest counter buff we've seen so far in the game. Uh, and this is four copies of this in your uh, in the purple starter deck. So this is pretty interesting because in the red starter deck, pretty much everything had, pretty much every event card that is, had two copies and there are four copies of this. So this is obviously going to be your go-to for countering in the purple deck. And then finally, we have the stage card of the purple starter deck, which is Onigashima, the base of, of Kaido's crew. And we have four copies of this, unlike the two copies of Sunny that we have in the red starter deck. And this is a nutty good stage card. It's a three cost. And its effect is activate main. You may rest this card if your leader has Animal Kingdom Pirates trait. Add a Dawn from your Dawn deck to your cost area and rest. So this is just a free Dawn gain every turn after it's played. Uh, it is really good. It's interesting to me that there's four copies of it because once you play it once, the other three copies become immediately useless. So I don't think it's in, in deck building overall as the game goes on. I think probably four stage cards is probably too many overall, maybe three. Uh, kind of thinking of tamers in Digimon, especially memory setting tamers. It's like three is that good middle ground number because once you have the memory setter, it no longer has a function. But I can see why you'd want four copies of it in the purple starter deck as it is naturally because you absolutely want this card. You want it as soon as possible. You want it on the field as soon as possible so that you can start gaining Dawn every turn, no matter what. You basically... Once it's on the field, you're getting three Dawn per turn as opposed to two, um, which is going to allow you to play those big boys that much sooner. So overall, the purple deck and purple as a theme uh, seems to be very much based on late game knockouts. It seems like it's basically hold on, do what you can to minimize your own pain. And, and while you do that, build your resources, and then once you have enough resources, go ham. Red is very much play cheap, use your energy in as many ways as possible, and hit as quickly as possible, whereas the purple seems like the exact opposite, which is hold on, charge it up, and then start hitting so hard that your opponent can't do anything about it, and clear your board without even having to touch them. Just play the card and get rid of your opponent's cards, and then do stuff. Obviously, the Kaido character card is going to be the the big cannon of the deck. You know, it's the card that it's like, all right, well, it's time to it's time to end this. And you play that Kaido character, you get rid of one of your opponent's biggest cards, and then he gets to swing right away. King is also pretty expensive, but it's not hugely expensive compared to that Kaido. But those two are going to be the cards once they're on the field. That's when you know you're set for the game. And then you use cards like Queen and Black Maria and Onigashima and the event cards and stuff and Jack to hold on and build your Dawn onto the field and just sort of hang out. And then you also have the nice little combo of ulti and page one, just getting some bodies on the field. If you are if you don't think you're going to get that big Dawn burst so that you'll be able to play your biggest cards, you'll at least be able to 
play basically two powerful cards at once and just start going in and swinging with those right away. So yeah, this deck is definitely going to require a lot more thought and a lot more core planning when you're strategizing during the game, just based on calculating, you know, returning Dawn to your Dawn deck versus how much Dawn you're going to gain the next time you, you have a turn, basically. So, you know, it's it, I think the Red Starter deck probably is going to be a lot more natural to learn versus the Purple Starter deck, which is, I think the, the upside of Purple is a lot higher, uh, but it does require a lot more correct playing. I think it's a lot more unforgiving if you play one card versus another. It might, it might, you know, screw you over for the whole rest of the game if you don't have the cards you need on the field from basically the very beginning. Um, but yeah, that's about all I've got today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe if you've got any thoughts or anything like that. Uh, and I'll see you guys soon. Have a good one.